In this video, I'll show you how to use the default start node to answer questions and filter user queries. The first thing you can enable your bot to do from the start node is to answer questions. This means that if your user begins the conversation with a question rather than a greeting like hello, your bot will be prepared for that and will be able to answer it. To enable this, we'll just click into the start node and toggle this setting on to answer questions from knowledge bases. From this menu, you can also select which knowledge base you'd like your bot to answer questions from, but for this example, I'll just have it search in all my knowledge bases. You know that this setting has been toggled on when the start node indicates a book icon like this. Next, let's filter our user's path based on whether or not our bot was able to answer a question. To do this, I'll place a standard node at the beginning of my workflow, and I'll drag two expression cards into it. One will determine whether or not my bot was able to answer a question, and one will set a path if my bot wasn't able to answer a question or didn't receive one at all. For this very first one, I'll label it response, and the condition will be if my bot was able to answer a question from a knowledge base. I'll use the turn.knowledgeagent.responded variable, which is the Boolean variable that determines whether or not my bot answered a question. In the below one, I'm going to name this one no response, and I'll use the same variable, but I'll place an exclamation mark at the beginning, which will indicate that we're trying to negate it, or in this case, find out whether or not our bot didn't answer a question. I'll place one path for each of these, and then we're done. Let's say you want some more information or you want to do something else with that first message. Your user's most recent message is always accessible using the event.preview variable, but let's say you want to access this later on in your flow after your user has already sent a couple of messages. What we're going to do now is use an execute code card to save that very first message so we can access it later. The first thing we need to do is create a variable for this. I'm going to create a simple string variable that I'll name first message. Then, at the very beginning of our flow, before we even use these paths, I'm just going to pop an execute code card. In here, I'm going to set the value of the first message variable equal to event.preview. So let's try that over here. I'll do workflow.firstMessage equals event.preview. What this does is takes that most recent message, the first message your user has sent, and saves it to the variable workflow.firstMessage. This is just in case we want to access it later. Now that we've put everything together, let's test it out. Before we do that, I just want to show you that the only information I have in my knowledge base is a simple sentence saying the tiger is orange. So if I ask anything else, my bot won't be able to answer it. I've also included some information here in these response and no response nodes that will make it easier for us to see whether or not our bot was able to answer. And finally, I've also added that variable that we saved that first message to so we can print it out later in the conversation. Let's give this a shot. So for my first message to my bot here, I'll say something like, what time does the restaurant open? Of course, my bot won't be able to answer this. So we see here, it's looking through my knowledge base. It doesn't have an answer for that question. And then it successfully sends me the question later on. Pretty cool. Happy bot building.